When I thought of coming tonight, I thought of this poem written by my son, Christian Telesmar, an actor in LA who was supposed to be a doctor. That's a whole nother story, we won't go into that. Okay, here it goes. If we reframe the mindset of trying as hard as I can to trying as hard as I dare, we would take ownership of our actions and we would realize that daring to endure is more than simply an external limitation of power. Rather, it is an internal will to progress, the will to fight and never give up. Don't stop fighting. Dare to endure. If you think about those words, you probably feel like I felt. I thought about the spirit of endurance that my grandmothers gave to me. My grandmothers, Ruby and Sarah, were born down south, deep south. They both worked in cotton fields. They both moved to the north. And when they got here, they were maids. Not because that was their gift to leave on this earth, but it was because that was primarily the opportunities made available to them. And one of the things they wanted to make sure that I knew was that my opportunities would be far greater. And they wanted to help me do that with my mind, my body, and my soul. So, one of the things they did was they taught me something. They taught me the difference between an internal narrative, an external narrative, and a counter narrative. Now, they didn't say those words exactly because they was grandmamas, they came from the South. <laughs> But the way they loved me, they nurtured me to those words. And one of the things they did when they imparted their wisdom, Grandma Sarah used to say this, she used to say wisdom is something that goes deep and seeps deep down in your skin. And whenever you need it, it comes back up through every pore. And I remembered that from her. So whenever I think about her words, I think about that. I remember being a child and I was playing in her garden and I'm dancing between her collard greens, turnip greens, and mustard greens, messing them all up. And I was singing a song and it said, and I considered myself brilliant. <laughs> it was, I'm going to be a dancer, I'm going to be a singer. See, I was rapping before that even came out. <laughs> and my grandmother stopped me and she had a garden tool in her hand, <laughs> CPS, and, um, <laughs> and she was shaking it at me, and she goes, girl, cut out all that. Do you know that you need to think about the reason why you are here on this earth? Don't you know, child? You were born with gifts in you, gifts, and if you die, with all of those gifts inside of you, you're just selfish. And I was six. <laughs> and I just <laughs> looked at her like, what? And anyway, so that was tucked away. Because <laughs> most six-year-olds can't contain that. I know I'm in early childhood education. We can't. They can't. And so as I got older, um, uh, I, I, I still was trying to figure out things. And I remember uh, being an older child, still a little older, and I lived, a, uh, my school was a block away from Grandma Ruby. And I remember having narratives that were negative that were coming at me. And I remember running to her home. And I considered her home what I call my holding environment the space that held me best. I always knew I was safe once I got there. And she would take me in her arms and I could feel her heartbeat. And mine's was erratic, but as she held me and she breathed toward me, I would calm down. But she would always ask me the question first, 
while I couldn't talk. You know that hiccupy cry that... <laughs> That's when she would ask me, what happened? And I'm trying to tell her. But as I heard her heartbeat, I calmed down. So I finally told her what was said to me. And this is what she said. Debbie, girl, that ain't your story. Oh, they told a story, all right, but it's not yours. It's not yours. Only you can be the author of your own story. I was like, hey, Grandma's deep. As I got older, I said that. Not at the time. <laughs> but she said that to me. And then she would say, so tell me your story. She would wait for affirmations. She would wait for me to say things. So I could say to her, not Grandma Sarah, but to her, I want to be a singer. And she was like, yes, I see that story. I want to be a dancer. Mm -hmm, I see that story. And so I became affirmed in counter narratives. I became affirmed to know that it was important for me to retell the story, not allow people to penetrate my spirit. I could erase what they were saying and I could create the words that were truth. I didn't have to take in a lie. But then I was 16 years old. That was a very tough year for me because Grandma Sarah, uh, Grandma Sarah became ill and Grandma Ruby became ill. And Grandma Ruby became so ill and she was living with us that she had to be hospitalized. And I remember when I went up to the hospital to visit her with my mom and my mom was concerned and the doctor goes, oh no, she's doing wonderful. In fact, she'll be able to come home tomorrow. So when my mother came back up to the hospital that evening, my grandmother said this to her, I'm not coming home tomorrow. I saw your father and his grave and I saw a bed of roses, empty bed of roses right next to him. I'm not coming to that home. I'm going home, but I'm not going home. My mother was like, Mom, please. The doctor said you're fine, and we're going to come at 1 o'clock and pick you up. Before my aunt and my mother and my father got to the hospital, she had passed away. And I was so hurt. I was devastated because we were so close. And because she told us that she was planning to leave, I felt that she deserted me. And then with Grandma Sarah not being available to talk to, I felt deserted once again. And so I got lost. I lost myself. And I lost the skill set of counter narratives. I couldn't write another narrative. And I couldn't remember that my grandmothers told me how much they wanted me to change the world, how much they wanted me to make a difference. At 16, after the death of Grandma Ruby, I didn't care about this world. And I didn't want to change anything. Gradually, I began to come back to the journey. And as I came back to the journey, I rewrote the narrative. And as I rewrote the narrative, I remembered one more thing that Grandma Ruby said to me. She said, what is something that everybody says about you? Everybody. Like, as you come across people, what do they say about you? <laughs> and I started listening for what people were saying to me. And they were saying, you have insight, you're inspiring, you ignite us. So I took those words and I connected them to my passion in social equity and justice. And I knew, I knew then, that was the connection. That's what I was supposed to do. And so I started igniting my gifts in those areas, just like Cousin Sarah said. I didn't want to take those things to me in the grave. And I recognized that doors began to open because I had made those connections. So I began to write books with people from around the world on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I began to um, be called on to speak in the community. I also was called on by the field of academia to go into institutions and to educate their faculty and staff and administration on social justice and equity. And I also was called upon by the community to, to encourage the community to step forward in the act of social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
I also created a paradigm, the Estevanism paradigm, and it's now a part of the state of Washington's CTC, educational community. And my words within that paradigm are used inside of social justice equity um, plans for different institutions in the state. I knew that was what I was supposed to do. So I want to encourage each of you. What is it that someone says about you all the time? What is it that people keep telling you? Because my grandma Ruby used to say, people, everybody can't tell the same lie. So if they are saying it about you, it must be true, right? And when you do that, connect it to what you're passionate about. And every time you drive by a graveyard, say this to yourself. How many unfulfilled desires are laying there? How much untapped potential is laying there? How many unwrapped gifts are laying there? I know for me, I want equity to start with children, and I want it to go all the way up to grown-ups. And for me, that's what I plan to do. And if nothing else can encourage you to move, I want you to stay on the journey. Don't stop fighting. Dare to endure. Thank you.